Bob Stewart is an attorney, a CPA, a business manager, and an entrepreneur with experience in several industries across several subjects, ranging from international business and turnarounds to serving in the roles of interim manager, corporate oversight, general counsel, and consulting advisor. At Platinum Group, he specializes in strategy and turnaround assistance, transitions, especially on the sell side of matters, and corporate governance leadership. Bob's been with the Platinum Group for 15 years. Bob, given your experience over those 15 years, especially in the area of M&A, how should business owners be, if they're looking to sell, how should they be looking to play their cards differently today than they might have been looking to do so pre-COVID-19? Well, the, as you can imagine with the decline in the market generally, uh, there's a, a real decline in many uh, valuations for businesses, uh, particularly because uh, if they're looking at EBITDA or some other typical measure of corporate value, uh, those all tend to be down here during the time of the uh, epidemic follow through from that. So um, it, uh, if, if one can hang on and get the business back to sort of a point of normally, normality or stasis, uh, that might be the best solution for many types of businesses. Now there are select industries and segments and niches uh, where uh, things are really thriving right now. So it might actually be a good opportunity. So what are those? Well, uh, certainly some of the tech businesses are, are going gangbusters, uh, but it, it's the businesses that are able to serve uh, their customer needs right now. And customer needs have changed pretty dramatically uh, here as a result of the epidemic. So uh, those are the businesses that could uh, command some premium. So what if you uh, were just doing fine, you know, your business was going along quite well, and uh, you were looking to sell and all of a sudden you got whammied and you're no longer one of those businesses that was, um, that is seen as serving a, a big need right now. The need might come back within six months, but you don't have a lot of money to play with. How do you bridge that gap between now and, and thinking, okay, you know, six months from now we can get our stride back? Well, uh, uh the businesses that are well positioned to uh, survive the, the tough times are those that have a good relationship with their bank, with their primary lenders, so that they can uh, finance their way through uh, difficult times and downturns. But uh, it's important to cut costs as much as reasonably possible. Um, also, I think most people already know about the many uh, business programs that are offered by the federal government. The PPP program uh, is certainly pretty well fully deployed. Uh, the Main Street Lending Program from the Federal Reserve is just coming out. Um, so there are some um, new and unique uh, ways to get some financing that's needed right now. And if I'm sitting there thinking, okay, do I hold on to this or is it time to finally sell my business? Um, what do I need to do to come up with a good decision on that, especially when it, um, there's the personal nature, as you know from being an entrepreneur, it's your baby. So how do you make a rational decision as to whether it's time to sell? And if so, how much can you get for it? Well, we were very fortunate. One of our clients uh, got sold on February 28th. So really just before the epidemic uh, came into uh, full force. And uh, we were very fortunate in that one to get that done. Uh, had we waited, I think we, uh, as with many other transactions that were sort of in the works at the time of the onset of the epidemic, um, we may have put it on hold uh, sort of permanently until uh, the, the economy is able to rebound uh, because of the nature of that industry that that company happened to be in. And um, so it, it is important to evaluate uh, your own situation. If, uh, and some business owners may feel incredibly desperate and they may be willing to sell at what they would consider a significant discount from the value of their business. Um, that's, a, that's a real possibility. Uh, or if they're in those, one of those lucky niches that is thriving right now, they may actually command a premium. And uh, to add to that, I do believe there's a lot of uh, investment capital looking for a home right now. There's there are many people, uh, private equity funds in particular have raised significant amounts of capital prior to the COVID-19 epidemic. 
and they uh, need to deploy uh, some of that. So there may be some opportunities for particular buyers to uh, come in and make an acquisition. Yeah, I was just going to ask, is it a seller's market or a buyer's market? And if it's a buyer's market, what can I do to dress my business up as, as attractively as possible? You know, uh, it's an upside down market and, a, and you can't say it's a buyer or seller's market uh, unless you specify the industry. Um, the, the most important things for the ability to sell a business and to be able to say, as you say, dress it up uh, for sale. Uh, one, having strong financial statements, having a good ability to do financial reporting is really vital. Uh, second, um, having right sized for the economic conditions right now. So if uh, you needed to cut your workforce by a third, uh, let's hope you did that because that makes the business more attractive if that brings it back to profitability for a prospective buyer. And uh, most prospective buyers are pretty sophisticated. They can see if a business is likely to be one that uh, will rebound after the epidemic is over, or if it's likely to be one that's a, a net loser over time. So, You know, a lot of times it seems like business owners come to these decisions on their own. Um, but from what you've seen, and I know this is kind of a self-serving question because you advise companies, but um, when should business leaders look for outside help? And, um, you know, we have developed a really strong, uh, what we call business transition practice here at Platinum, because we think it's so important for every business to have a transition plan and for every business, whether or not they intend to sell it, whether they intend to uh, pass it into a trust to, for some public benefit, or uh, perhaps may create an ESOP and, and have their employees be the future owners of the business, uh, or pass it along to family members and, and have the next generation take over the business. Um, all of those things require some planning. It takes many years to make those things happen. And so um, we think it's important that every business uh, get that kind of help and get it at any time. Uh, here during a crisis, we see businesses call us who are more in crisis, uh, but uh, certainly uh, that's not required to use a professional to, to get some of those things done. Um, but crisis management is another thing that Platinum has a lot of deep experience in. So uh, I, I, and I really implore people to, uh, if they see their business spiraling downward, get that help sooner rather than later, because there's so much more that can be done uh, before all the capital is wasted away. In addition to uh, reaching the point of saying, okay, I need to bring somebody in to help. Uh, what else, when you think back of, at uh, huge changes over time, whether it was 9-11 or the Great Recession, what's one thought you have in terms of what every business owner and leader should be doing right now uh, to avoid having to go to a firm in a crisis situation? So there are a couple of things that I tell every leader that I work with. And, and number one, communication is so vitally important. You have to communicate with your employees. You have to communicate with your vendors. You have to communicate with your customers, of course. And you also have to communicate with your primary source of financing, your lender. Um, and uh, what you're going to communicate depends on the circumstance. Uh, but know this, and, and this is one of the things that I've seen in this crisis that even more profoundly than at other times, your uh, people uh, in all of those categories, they need you to lead, uh, to, to be uh, dithering, to sitting on the fence, waiting for something to happen. Uh, this is no time for that. This is a time for action. This is a time for decisive leadership. And, uh, and it is one of those times, Dale, to reference your earlier question, when um, people may need some assistance in figuring out what is the right step to do as a leader. Uh, this is a good time to have outside professionals assist in those decision-making processes. You know, it's definitely a time to be decisive, but how do you balance uh, needing to be decisive with uh, throwing everybody's um, perception off? If you are the type of person who's been very methodical with how you've grown and run your business for years, and all of a sudden you need to be more decisive, how do you do that without throwing off the way people are used to having things operate in, at your business? I'm not suggesting not to be methodical. I'm just suggesting that uh, oftentimes no decision is a decision. So it's important to uh, act when it's time to act. 
and uh, the failure to act can be uh, uh, as important as uh, any actual decision. Mm -hmm. And then I was wondering too, um, you know, you and I have kind of joked and I've joked with other people about the hundreds of emails that I'm getting every day from people saying that um, they have some way of really helping me or helping other people with this situation. And I know a lot of them do, but uh, why would somebody reach out to Platinum Group all over all these other entities that are, are saying that they can help right now? Well, uh, there's plenty of work to go around and, and there are many other good uh, qualified consultants. So I, I don't wanna uh, suggest they're not, but um, Platinum Group does have a long history of developing uh, long lasting relationships with our clients. Um, I think uh, the beginning of this crisis is one that sort of exemplified that. We helped many of our clients uh, apply for PPP loans, for example. I don't think we got paid for any of that work. Uh, it's just uh, the right thing to do at the right time and, and that's how we operate. Um, Platinum has uh, over 20 professionals who are very well seasoned, have worked in a myriad of industries and uh, I think we work very hard to get the right people addressing the key questions and issues that are confronting our clients. So um, I think the depth, breadth of Platinum's uh, talent and the um, sort of our, our core values that are exemplified by doing the right thing and building those long-term relationships, uh, that's, a, I think, a real differentiator in terms of who we are and how we can help. We're almost out of time, but uh, values brings up another question I wanted to ask you, and that is corporate governance. You have quite a bit of experience in, in that area. Um, how can corporate governance really help today? And I ask that, um, especially with regards to situations where corporate governance may have been addressed years ago at a company, um, and maybe they have mission, vision, and values, and things of that nature, but, um, how do you bring those to bear at their greatest potential right now if you haven't really been using them or talking about them much in the last couple of years? Let me address the situation where there's really a dearth of, I think, formal corporate governance. And it's a classic situation where an entrepreneur uh, is the sole shareholder, uh, is the sole uh, CEO, a uh, sole member of the board of directors and the sole uh, chief executive. Uh, when she goes to um, make those decisions, there's, there's not that kind of accountability that you have in those situations. So I think it's very important in a transition to have a, a good, strong corporate governance structure. It's also important in a time of crisis. And the formality of having those uh, regular board meetings for most companies quarterly is sufficient. Uh, but for the CEO to prepare for those meetings to uh, figure out what has gone on and transpired in terms of the company's financial performance up to this time, and then what is the strategy going forward, and to be able to articulate that to the board and uh, react to the questions and concerns of the board members who care about the company may have, that discipline by itself is a phenomenal benefit to the business and helps decision making really get sharp. How can... Uh business owners and leaders, especially at smaller companies where they're doing everything every day right now just to keep the lights on or just to, to stay alive. Um, they may be thinking, I really don't have a lot of time right now to um, worry about corporate governance. How can they address that while also still covering all the other bases they have to cover right now to stay alive? You know, um, I, I, it just has to be done on a regular basis. When um, uh, you're driving your car down the road and you're doing all the things, you're, you're, you're driving with the steering wheel, you're using your turn signal, you're doing all of the various things that have to be done to drive the car, but you don't know what your destination ought to be, um, you'll get somewhere, uh, but it might not be where you wanna go. So it's, it's just very important at any time for a business to do that um, strategic work that is part of the governance process. I suppose too, it's just a matter of can they carve out a certain part of the day or uh, of the week to work on this um, is probably helpful too. Do you have any examples that you think of over the years that you've either had as clients or read about 
that are good examples of where uh, companies' corporate governance really came in to uh, help them a great deal. Yes, um, many examples. The uh, corporate governance, um, we saw a situation where, well, I, I give you a very stark situation where the uh, owner, primary leader of the business passed away. Uh, the fact that there was a board of directors in place, uh, that there was a clarity, um, the family ended up inheriting the equity of the business, uh, but the family, especially in a time of distress uh, over their lost loved one, um, didn't have to uh, also at the same time come in and, and do what needed to be done to ensure the business would also survive or would survive uh, in spite of the demise of the uh, principal operator. So, um, and, and uh, I'm not sure that that business would have survived if there wasn't that kind of a governance structure. In place. Well, that sounds good. That's the last question I had, except for one more, and this is my very last. Uh, anything else that we should have touched on today that we didn't already talk about? Well, uh, just of, of the many, many things that, that are going on, I do think that issue of uh, communication is so important. And, and here in the time of the epidemic, um, we don't, many of us don't have the face-to-face -face contact in the office that we're used to having. So it's really important to um, use alternative means of communication and for, particularly for older uh, CEOs and business leaders, uh, keep in mind that people that are some of the younger members of your team uh, are used to communicating in ways that are different than what you are communicating, you are used to communicating it. So use all of the tools that are available to you. The Zoom meetings, I think, uh, have been really effective for many uh, businesses or uh, Microsoft Teams, if you prefer that. But there are many uh, different forms of, of doing those meetings. But texting, emailing, telephone calls, all of those are important. And uh, you can tailor your communication method to your audience. You can, uh, and, and oftentimes you need to do that. And, um, in some ways, it's like parents needing to adapt for each of their children's different personalities. You, you as a parent, need to, uh, adapt to them and not expect them to adapt to you, so. Well, that's a good note to end on. So, Bob, thank you for sharing some of your experience and, and perspectives with us today. All right, Dale, thank you. And I wanna thank all of our viewers and listeners as well. If you have any questions you'd like to run by Bob or anyone else at the Platinum Group, you can call 952-829-5700. You can also learn more about the Platinum Group at theplatinumgrp.com. With that, thanks again for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day.